So in the previous lectures, we discussed the image parameter and the Gaussian parameter. Uh, where we discussed that in image parameter, uh, we start with an image and then we just subsample it uh, to get the next image and then we take this image and then we further subsample it to get the next image in the parameter and so on. We then take this image, subsample it to get the next image in the parameter. So this is the image parameter. of the original image i. In the Gaussian image pyramid, we start uh, with an image. To obtain the next image in the pyramid, we first apply the Gaussian blur to the image and then we subsample it. Then again, to get the next image in the pyramid, we apply Gaussian blur and then we subsample it to get this image. And we repeat the same process over here. We apply the Gaussian blur and then we apply subsampling to get the next image in the pyramid. So this is Gaussian image pyramid or simply the Gaussian pyramid of image i. And the advantage of Gaussian image pyramid over the image pyramid as we discussed in the previous lecture is that we get rid of the effect of aliasing. So we get rid of the aliasing effect. Now we will discuss the concept of Gaussian scale space. So if we take an image I and if we apply the Gaussian blur to this image with some uh, standard deviation sigma, so we get the smoothed version of this image. We will denote it by I subscript sigma to denote that we apply the Gaussian filter with standard deviation sigma. Similarly, we can take the input image and apply subsampling, the uniform subsampling uh, by a factor of 2. And if we again resize the image, we denote this image as I subsample resized, resized to the original dimensions. And if we take the differences, so if we take the difference d1, which is i minus i sigma, and d2 being i sigma minus i ssr, we can take the absolute value of the difference. Or we just take the Frobenius norm of the uh, norm of the differences to get the uh, differences d1 and d2. So if we, if if we take the differences, we'll uh, we'll see that d1 is sufficiently large than d2. So what it means is that the difference between the original image and its Gaussian blurred image uh, D1, it's significantly much more th uh, than the difference between this Gaussian blurred image and the subsampled version of this image. What it means is that applying Gaussian blur to an image does what subsampling does approximately. So it means that Gaussian blur approximates the subsampling step. That is applying the Gaussian blur reduces the information in the image or reduces effectively the data in the image which is what the subsampling does. So if we do subsampling by a factor of 2 at every step of subsampling we throw away 75% of the data. Whereas, if we apply the Gaussian blur, we retain the image of original size, but still we significantly reduce the data or the information, or we can say effectively we reduce the resolution of the image. So, applying the 
Gaussian blur to an input image I effectively reduces the information the information or the data or the resolution of the image so resolution so one way of, of, of measuring the resolution of the image to check the number of pixels along the rows and the number of pixels along the columns uh, the other way to, uh, to 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 quantify resolution is by the amount of information that is present in an image so we can say that applying gaussian blur effectively uh, reduces the resolution of the image where the resolution uh, here we are measuring as the amount of information or data present in an image and uh, this is exactly what the uh, subsampling does so subsampling definitely reduces the information the data and and also reduces the resolution of the image uh, we can where we can measure the resolution as the amount of data uh, present in the image since we throw away the 75 percent of the data the, the size of the image shrinks and effectively re reduces the resolution the data and the information that is now present in the uh, subsampled image so we see that gaussian blur also effectively uh, reduces the information the data and also uh, effectively reduces the resolution of the image where the measure of the resolution over here is in terms of the information of the data present in an image and uh, furthermore as we discussed earlier uh, that subsampling creates the effect of aliasing and we can get rid of that by uh, by gaussian blurring the image before applying the subsampling but uh, the idea behind Gaussian scale space uh, exploits this property of reducing the resolution of an image by applying the Gaussian blur with some value sigma being the standard deviation. Furthermore, the value of sigma controls the amount of information that we can reduce as a result of applying the Gaussian blur to, the, uh, to, uh, to an image. So for low values of sigma, for smaller values of sigma, uh, we reduce a small amount of information and with high values of sigma, uh, we reduce more uh, information uh, from the image. So effectively, uh, sigma is used to control the resolution of an image. So if we want to decrease the resolution of the image significantly, we select a very high value of sigma and, and if we want to reduce the resolution only by a small factor, we select a small value of sigma. And now we take this concept or this idea to construct what is known as the Gaussian scale space. So to construct the Gaussian scale space, we exploit the idea that applying Gaussian blur to an image effectively reduces the information or the data or the resolution of the image. Furthermore, uh, as we discussed earlier, the larger the value of the sigma, the more is the blur in the image and as a result, the more is the information or the data loss in the image and thus the lower the resolution of the image. So as sigma increases, the resolution of the image decreases. And this is a property that we exploit to construct the Gaussian scale space of an image. So to construct the Gaussian scale space, uh, we use sigma to reduce the resolution of an image. So we construct a Gaussian scale space by repeatedly convolving uh, the image by a Gaussian blur with a standard deviation sigma. So we take an image. So let's assume we have a Gaussian kernel with sigma. So we have an image, we apply the Gaussian blur to it and get an image I prime. We take the image I prime 
apply the Gaussian blur to it again with same value of sigma and we get I double prime and we repeat this step until we get some image I nth prime. After successively applying uh, the Gaussian blur n times to the image. So now we can stack all these Gaussian blurred images on top of each other. So we have our input image. We apply the Gaussian blur g sigma to it to get the Gaussian blurred image. We then take this image and apply the Gaussian blur to it again. To get a new image and we repeat this process until some n number of steps. So this stack of images, so as we go up in this stack of images, the resolution of the image decreases. So at the bottom, we have the image of highest resolution. And here we are measuring the resolution of an image as the amount of information present in the image. And at the top of this stack, we have the image of lowest resolution. So we have an image of least resolution. Furthermore, we can see that resolution is directly related to the scale of the image. So here at the bottom, we have the image of highest scale. And here we have the image at the smallest scale. So recall our lecture of blob detection where we discussed that uh, to detect blobs of varying size in images or to detect features of varying size in images, we can either uh, control the scale of the detector or we can also control the scale of the signal or the scale of the image and, uh, and, and, and we can do both as well uh, which is the idea that is exploited by most of the advanced blob detector algorithms and Gaussian scale space uh, effectively uh, facilitates uh, detection of uh, features or blobs in images at varying scales. So here we have an image and the features at highest scale and here we have image and uh, features at lowest scale. So uh, to summarize everything, we have seen that in image pyramid, we take an image and we just apply subsampling to get the next image in the pyramid. In Gaussian pyramid, we take an image, we apply the Gaussian blur to it and then we subsample it to, it to get the next image in the pyramid. So here we are controlling uh, the Gaussian blur as well as the size of the image. In the Gaussian scale space, on the other hand, we don't perform any subsampling step. We just repeatedly apply the Gaussian blur to the images to get the next image in the pyramid or the stack, uh, which is at lower scale compared to the image below. And we exploit the idea that applying Gaussian blur effectively reduces the resolution of the image where we measure resolution as the information that is contained uh, in the image. So now we will discuss another concept uh, which is known as octaves which combines uh, the concepts of image pyramid
and uh, the Gaussian scale space. And also it combines the ideas of Gaussian image pyramid and the Gaussian scale space. It varies from algorithm to algorithm uh, whether we combine the idea of image pyramid and Gaussian scale space or do we combine the idea of Gaussian image pyramid and the Gaussian scale space to, to construct the octaves of images. So we will next discuss the octaves.